very good evening to all brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. So today is the 14th April 2022. Eh? It's a Tuesday, a uh, Thursday class, sorry. Mm. So we will be continuing from this book. The wonderful Dhamma Lotus Flower Sutta. We are at page 216 of the hard copy here. Eh? Just relax body and mind. Then your author line so that you can have your half an hour of awareness based meditation. <laughs> so just relax, body and mind, completely relax. Be at ease, just let things be and maintain awareness. No need to know, no need to do anything, just maintain awareness for as long as you can. These are the first three support that will lead to the stability of awareness-based meditation. Mm. And finally, for those who already know how to meditate, already know how to develop the awareness-based uh, nature, you can straight away silence everything and stay at the heart area. Then allow the silent mind to do is whatever awareness detection around the heart area. Just let it move. That is following the fourth support, trust. Trust that nature to locate its gateway. Then it will move by itself. Whatever away, away, finish. Stay at the heart area. You can detect any vibration, any heartbeat or what stay there. Then yeah. let everything silent by itself, slow down by itself until the mind becomes very, very quiet. Then use that quiet mind or silent mind to observe, to develop understanding. That's how you develop the awareness-based meditation. Part one of this book, the wonderful Dhamma Lotus Flower Sutta. Okay. I will continue from where we start. Hmm. The task of one's white hair marked can be extended or contracted far or near. It's like a cylindrical light bulb that illuminates everything. You still cannot picture it. Let me give you a rough analogy. <coughs> it's like a flashlight or the headlight of a car. Turn them on and they shine across a great distance. When the dust come one shines the white, Hair mark like it shine not just a mile or two, but in the entire eastern direction across 18,000 world system. Does it only shine in the eastern direction? You ask. It's like the flashlight, you can point it wherever you wish. If you want to, you can shine it to the east south, north, west, up or down, heaven or earth, wherever you like. In the previous suttas, Sakyamuni Buddha didn't emit light from the white hair mark. In the Surangama Sutta, Sakyamuni Buddha emitted light from the flesh cow, the invisible summit atop of his head. As the facts of that sutta tell us, at that time the world honored one from the flesh curry atop his head, sent for a thousand jewel lights. The light from the invisible summit is not the same as the light from the white hair mark. To say nothing of being able to listen to the Dharma Flower Sutta every day as we do, to hear even a single word, a sentence, or even 
sorry, or an evening lecture, is to plan the cause, causes of body. Oh, sorry, the causes of Buddhahood. If you never come back again to listen, the Buddha within you will not run off, and you can, you are certainly to become a Buddha. But that's in the future, not the present. How long will it take? It's not for sure. Those of you who now are hearing the Sutta all have good roots. Now, this one is very true. Right? You must have good roots to have condition to listen to the true Dhamma. People with good roots should study the Buddha Dharma. Don't slide yourself as worthless thing. What has the Buddha Dharma got to do with me? You should know that outside of the Buddha Dharma, nothing else has anything to do with you. Only the Buddha Dharma has anything to do with you and it relates to you in a very important way. It will lead you to become a Buddha. Mm. You say, I don't believe it. How could I become a Buddha? It's just your disbelief that will enable you to become a Buddha. Since you don't believe you can become a Buddha, ah, in the future you will become one. That's just a wonderful Dhamma. Despite your disbelief, much to your surprise, all of a sudden, it will have happened. The wonderful Dhamma Lotus Flower Sutta is just that wonderful. So here, what Pastor Shenhua is trying to share with us is a lot of things in life, especially when it comes to spiritual cultivation, we may not know, eh? we may not know eh, what really is in store for the individual. Hmm. Sometimes a lot of people, they will be very surprised, they say, it's so strange. When they were young, or before they encountered the Buddha Dharma, they never thought such a thing is possible. Uh, that's why the Dhamma is wonderful. Uh, then there are those who are cultivated. If you have done it for a long period of time, stabilize understanding. Somehow you are different when you come. You will know. From young, you will know. You are different. You are unique. So a lot of things you do not doubt. You know it's meant to be. Otherwise, this thing cannot happen. Uh, it is like this line, my nature knew. When I was young, a lot of strange things happened. Uh, but my nature knew that I was not a normal child, not a normal kid. There are a lot of things that I understand, that I come to know, is very different from the normal convention of society and the civilization. And all this, they will manifest. Yeah. That as my nature develops the ability to understand all this and connect back, then when it starts to come out and share, then you realize a lot of being doesn't have all this capability. Yeah. But then a lot of them somehow, if it's meant to be, they have the affinity with the Triple Gem, with the Buddha Dharma. Somehow they will come into contact. And the way they come into contact also very strange. They never expect this to happen. Then most of them before they come to the Buddha Dharma, they don't believe anything. They don't have any idea what this thing is until later. But later, once they come to know what this is, then it triggers something very deep within. And from that moment onward, they become different. Uh, that's why they will say before that, you tell them, hey, 
you are destined to be a Sampasambuddha. They don't believe you. They say you're crazy. Uh, I don't have even any affinity with the teaching. How can I become a Sampasambuddha? But the very moment when you say that, it's like Shen Hua say, it's because of your disbelief that things can happen. Because the wonderful Dhamma is such. Uh, so before that time comes, before you have that ability to comprehend or understand all this, you will have this mind which is somehow very funny, uh, very strange. That's why they say beyond your wildest dream. Uh, sometimes in disbelief after it happened, just amazing, how can it be possible? Uh, so sometimes you thank your lucky star, it's nothing to do with your lucky star. It's all conditioned from your past. You may not know who you are, what you are, your nature is. But when the time comes, when things happen, even suddenly evolve and become so extraordinary. So this is the part that I also want to share with you. Huh? that the Buddha Dhamma is really wonderful. So never underestimate yourself. Never look down upon yourself. Never have this type of thought. Aya, we all we can. How can we be huh? like all these people? They are special. They have their past. They are gifted. No, you never know. But you can also draw a lot of karmita. When they connect, when they move, they move. But before that, they, they were no different. They are like any ordinary being. Mm. Okay, so we continue huh, to the next section of the Sutta. Huh? Further, we were seen all the present Buddhas in those land. Commentary. The second of the six potents is that of seeing the Buddha. While the white hair maklat, emitted by Sakyamuni Buddha, appear the Buddha lands, and within the Buddha land there were Buddhas teaching and transforming living beings. This passage of text is the potent of seeing the Buddha. The white hair maklat represent the middle way. Why did the Buddha emit light, and why did he choose to emit light from the white hair mark? The Buddha emitted light in order to illuminate those whose potential had ripened. The living being who should be taught, the living being who should be taken across, those really, sorry, those ready to be taught are called those with potential. They have the opportunity to be taught. The teaching is dispensed in response to the potential of living beings. Depending upon an individual's potential, a certain teaching is given. Thus, the emitting of the light represents the dispelling, oh sorry, the dispensing of the teaching in response to potential. So this is one of the unique qualities of Samasambuddha. There is another way to explain the white hair mark. It represents the severing of delusion and casting out of doubt. The light which was emitted got rid of all the doubt of living beings. It broke through the deluded thought. That's why the light was emitted. As to the white hair light, Amitabha Buddha also has a white hair mark. And so do other Buddhas. The verse in praise of Amitabha Buddha say, Amitabha's Buddha is the color of gold. Sorry, Amitabha's body is a color of gold. The splendid, sorry, the splendor of his hallmark has no peer. His white hair mark like wines. Round five mouth sumero. White as a sea are his azure eyes, pure and clear, shining in his brilliance by transformation. Are countless bodhisattvas and infinite Buddhas. His eighty-four 
sorry, his 48 rounds will be our liberation. In nine lotus stages, we reach the further shore. The brilliance of Amitabha's 32 hallmark and the 80 minor characteristics are incomparable. The hair mark located between his eyebrow winds around and around like a dragon, not in a straight course, but winding and coiling. How big is it? As big as five Mount Sumeru. His azure eyes are big, deep, and clear, and as large as the four great ocean. Would you say those are big eyes? Within his light are many, many Buddhas. And the Bodhisattvas are also beyond all count. He has made 48 vows to save living beings. Every vow contains the wish that living beings might realize Buddhahood. <coughs> there are nine grades of lotus. Superior, superior. Superior, middle. Superior, inferior. Middle, superior. Middle, middle. Middle, inferior. Inferior, superior. Inferior, middle. Inferior, inferior. All living beings are led to the other shore, to Nibbana, to realize Buddhahood. Sakyamuni Buddha's white hair mark is also as big as the five Mount Sumero. According to the Sutta of the Samadhi of contemplating the sea of Buddhas, when the Buddha came into the world, his white hair mark measured five feet. When he cultivated ascetic practices, it was 14 feet. When he realized Buddhahood, it was 15 feet. The white hair mark is empty in the center, like a glass tube. It represents the four virtues of Nirvana. So the four virtues of Nirvana are permanent, joy. Uh, of course, they put a cell, huh? then they put in bracket true self, which is their true nature. Then purity. Huh? The emptiness in the center represents the middle way and Permanence. His softness represents joy, his whiteness, purity. The ability to extend or contract it at will represents true self. Thus, represent the other four virtues of Nirvana. The white hair mark represents the middle way, the real mark, the precious seed. Within the light from the white hair mark could be seen all the Buddha in other lands. Also could be seen from the time of the Buddha's birth up to his Nirvana, all the bitter practices he cultivated in all their various aspects, and then following his Nirvana, all his merits and virtue. So this is a brief description eh, of what is possible and what will happen if you cultivate until Samasa Buddhahood the perfection, the virtue, the wisdom, all this can bring forth all this possibility. Okay, I'll read on Sutta. And all the suttas and dhamma spoken by the Buddha was heard, outlined, F3, the potent of hearing the dhamma. Okay, commentaries. This is the third potent, the potent of hearing the Dhamma. The six potent in the order in the other world fall into three pairs. The first two potents, that of seeing the six destiny and the seeing of the Buddha, make the pair of the common and sixty. Those in the six destiny are common people, and the Buddha are sages. <coughs> Sutta. Also seen were the bhikkhus. Bikunis, Upasaka, Upasika in those lands who cultivated and attained the way. Then outline F4, the potent of seeing the fourfold multitude attain the way. Commentaries. 
What were the Buddhas in their respective Buddha land doing? They were speaking the Dhamma, lecturing on the Sutta and expounding the teaching. What is the use of speaking the Buddha Dhamma? It was so that the book, the Bhikkhus, Bhikkhuni, Upasakas and Upasika, the fourfold assembly of disciples, could count it in a court with the Dhamma and certified to be to the fruits, perhaps to the fruits of Arahanship, or perhaps to become Bodhisattvas and Buddhas. Within the Buddha's white hair monk could be seen the Buddha speaking the Dhamma and the four assemblies who cultivated and attained the fruits. These two pattern represent the pair of people and Dhamma, the people being the fourfold assembly and the Dhamma being the way which they certify to. Then we move on to the next part of the Sutta. Moreover, the scene. <coughs> the Bodhisattva Mahasattvas, the various causes and conditions, the various beliefs and understanding and the various appearances of the practice of the Bodhisattva way. Outline F5. <coughs> the potent of seeing the cultivation of the Bodhisattva way. Commentary. Moreover, the seen the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, the various causes and conditions by which they cultivated the Dhamma Dao to teach and transform the various kinds of living beings, the various belief and understanding. Perhaps they cultivate through belief and understanding of the Four Holy Truth, and perhaps through belief and understanding of the Twelve Causes and Conditions, or perhaps through belief and understanding the Six Perfection and the Ten Thousand Conducts. The various appearances of their practices of the Bodhisattva way. This does not refer to the physical appearance of the Bodhisattva, but to the various practices and dhammas they cultivate. They practice the Bodhisattva way. What is the Bodhisattva way? It is the benefit is to benefit oneself and benefit others, to enlighten oneself and to enlighten others. The task comes once, white hair, mark shines from this land into other Buddha lands. And this represents the Dhamma of enlightening oneself and enlightening others, benefiting oneself and benefiting others. Walking the Bodhisattva way, you must enlighten yourself and enlighten others, benefit yourself and benefit others. This is the fifth. The potent of seeing the practice of the Buddha, uh, sorry, the Bodhisattva Kanda. Then we move on to the sixth one, eh, Sutta. Further, we we'll see the Parinibbana of Buddhas. And after the Parinibbana of Buddhas, the building of stupa with the seven jewels to hold their sharia, means their relics. Eh? All right. F6 pretend of seeing the Buddha entering Nirvana. Commentary. Further, we see the Pari Nirvana of the Buddha within the white hair mark line. The Buddha could be seen. Nirvana is a Sanskrit word which is interpreted as meaning perfect stillness. It is said that the merit is nowhere not perfect and the virtue nowhere not still. Nirvana is also interpreted as meaning not produce and not destroy, person or mere. Birth and death have been brought to an end. And after the Parinirvana of Buddha, the building of stupa with the seven jewels to hold their relics. The stupa made of the seven jewels were built to honor the relics of the Buddha. The relics is a Sanskrit word which means efficacious bones. Stupa are buildings used to house the relics. 
after Sakyamuni Buddha entered Nibbana, his Buddha, his body was cremated, and in the remains, an uncountable number of relics, bright gem-like relics, were found. A jewel stupa were built to contain them, so that people could worship and make offering to them. In the task come one's white hair mark like one could see how in other lands after the Buddha entered Nirvana. Their bodies were cremated and the relics were obtained. Then stupa were built for them. Stupa also a Sanskrit word, which means prayer grief. It also means a high and manifested place. Because they are tall structure which can easily be seen. What are stupa used for? They are used to house the Buddha's relics so that people can make offering to them. Wherever the Buddha's relics are present, the Buddha's Dharma body is also present. This is the sixth, the potent of seeing the Nirvana of the Buddha. The fifth and sixth potent make up the pair of beginning and the end. The Bodhisattva are at the beginning. They are cultivating the way the Buddha had reached the end, the ultimate state of Buddhahood. This ends the discourse of the six potent in the other worlds. Then Master Shen Hua continues, I lecture to you coming and going, and you pay no attention. You must pay close attention to the Buddha Dharma in order to understand it fully. If it goes in one ear and out the other, it's of no use at all. You could listen for a hundred years, yet it would be just as if you never listened. Why? Because you don't remember it. <coughs> You don't take note of it. You are now listening to the Sutta and studying the Buddha Dharma. If you were to go somewhere else and were invited to speak, you could speak in such a way that it gush off unseasonably. Your mouth would be like raging rivers. Everyone would be very pleased. But then, if some said, just one moment, excuse me, but I have a question. How many kinds of Nirvana are there? Please tell me. You would get, oh, oh, I forgot. <laughs> well, who did you study under? Wait, uh, uh, so we have to mute the thing. Somebody's mic went on me. Oh, you jump yeah. I have to mute them. Ah, okay, mute already. Huh? Okay, we go back to our sharing. Huh? I study with the Dhamma master for several years, but although I heard them, I have forgotten now. Will you say that was losing face or not? You may not understand any of the profound aspect of the Dhamma, but if you don't even know what the four kinds of Nirvana are, you would really lose space, wouldn't you? There is not much time left, so I will just tell you the names. No doubt, when I do, you will all recall them. If I didn't tell you, you wouldn't be able to remember them. Once I tell you, you will pipe up and say, I don't forget, I didn't forget. Oh, you mean those four kind? If you know ahead of time, that's okay. If you have waited until after you have been told and then insist you know it all along, it wouldn't work. What are they? The first is the nirvana or the purity of the self nature. Then there's another one, the nirvana with residue. Then there's a third one, the nirvana without residue. Then the fourth one is the nirvana of no dwelling place. Sutta. Then the Bodhisattva Maitreya had his thought. Now the world honor one 
manifest sign of spiritual transformation. What is the reason for this potent? The Buddha, the world honored one, has now entered Samadhi. Yet these are inconceivable and rare events. Who should I ask concerning them? Who could answer? He further thought the Dhamma Prince Manjushri has in the past drawn near and made offering to limitless Buddhas. Surely he has seen such rare sign. I shall now ask him. So D3 is the doubtful thought. Eh? E1, the doubt of Maitreya. Commentaries. In this passage of text, Maitreya Bodhisattva give rise to doubt. What are his doubts? He doesn't understand what the Buddha is all is about to do. The Buddha has emitted light and the earth shook. The six potent potents were seen in this world and in the other world as well. Maitreya Buddha did it. does not understand what the potents mean. For this reason, he has some doubt. When Maitreya Buddha or Bodhisattva give rise to doubt, the rest of the assembly does so too. Then the Bodhisattva Maitreya had this thought. Which Bodhisattva is he? He is the very fat one, the one who always laughs. He is extremely compassionate. Whether you have a good or an evil person, he likes you all the same. He regards all living beings with equal compassion and doesn't make discrimination among them. So this is uh, Maitreya. Huh? Now the world honor one manifest sign of spiritual transformation. Now the world honor one has manifest state of spiritual penetration, transformation and changes. He emitted light from the white hair mark and there were the six types of earthquakes, all as a result of the Buddha's spiritual power. The Bodhisattva has never seen them before. And so he didn't know what they meant. The Bodhisattva Maitreya is a successor Bodhisattva, a Buddha to be. He is waiting for Sakyamuni Buddha to retire, and then he will realize Buddhahood in the Saha world. Although he is basically very wise, he still doesn't know what the Buddha was going to do. Why didn't he know? Those at one level do not understand those on a higher level. The Bodhisattva on the first ground does not understand those on the second ground. Those on the third ground do not understand the rhyme of equal enlightenment. And the equal enlightenment Bodhisattva does not understand the wonderful enlightenment of the Buddha. It is said the common folk doesn't know the wise. Simple common people are incapable of understanding the state of the wise one. Why? Because being simple and common, their thoughts are stupid and dull. Either they don't go far enough or they go too far. People with scattered thought do not understand those with samadhi. People who are continuously fluttered and always glancing nervously about the north, east, south, west. Do not know what the people sitting here in Samadhi is experiencing. So here, what uh, is being shared is very true. If you have cultivated, you will understand what is being said. When you cultivate, the first thing that will happen is your wisdom will arise. But before your wisdom arise, the cultivator will also know a lot of things have changed. Your mind, your mind states are different. The spiritual faculties has developed. The mental hindrance is gone. You are always with your true mind, silent, still, tranquil, no longer heedless no longer like ordinary being. That's why what they say is very true. <coughs> the wise and the 
deluded. They have a totally different world apart. So unless you go this way, you cannot understand. But as you go this way, as explained by Master Shen Hua, it's very true. Stage by stage, you evolve. Stage by stage, you transform. So those who are at the initial stage may not understand the more advanced or higher stages of cultivation. Then like the Bodhisattva way, even if you are on the Bodhisattva way, you will know a lot of things that the Siddhu way does not know, does not understand. But as you tread the Bodhisattva way, you realize there are so many transformations and so many what they call grounds of cultivation. And as you progress, you only understand up to the level you are. Then a lot beyond your level, you cannot understand. Because the cultivation is very strange. It's the way it is. It's just like when I share with most Kayanimitas about my nature, how my nature comes, and how my nature just share whatever it has without reservation, nothing. Well, it know there is no way cultivator can cross it so fast. Uh, and this thing is such Unless you are connected and you know how to do it, then the journey begins. Then after the journey begins, if you are a diligent cultivator who has the faith understanding and the understanding and the path behind walking this uh, way and cultivating it, then you will progress very fast. Uh, and then you will return to the level you are before you come. Then from there, you evolve again. You transform again. You perfect yourself again. But you also know for people who just started, it's going to take them a long, long time to develop all this. <coughs> but of course, over the long period of cultivation and journey, there are some cultivators who are unique in their own way and they can move at very fast speed too. Uh, and there are many ways to cultivate too. That part is also true, but very seldom, very rare, do you find such a being or cultivator. So Buddha Dhamma is such, There is no way you can like want to speed up and move. Uh, it is like already meant to be. Then all these things will fall into place. Uh, certain things are possible, but most of the thing that need a lot of understanding and faith diligent and perseverance to develop that one actually the way my nature look at it is not easy yeah. but the moment you have all those understanding already when you already very clear about the way that you determine and during that time you can move pretty fast but no matter how fast it still take you a while because the transformation of the human form and mind, the consciousness, that's why they call it uh, transformation of consciousness. And to do that, the cultivation need to connect to that nature. And that nature need to go in and do a lot of work within. That's why that one is trust you have to develop the ability to do the fourth support, which is trust. And when trust arises, that external yin-yang energy, they will go through the gateway and become pure energy. 
then this spill energy will activate the internal movement, the physical. And then the physical will transform. Yeah, transform. Yeah, once it's activated, the vibration, then that is the, the center all different. <coughs> <coughs> then when they transform, the beautiful thing is the transformation of consciousness reach a level where the vibration of your true mind, your pure nature, become more and more refined, more and more refined, until the mundane mind cannot take it. Then it will start to collapse. And the whole process of it collapsing is very amazing and beautiful. Then your brain also, a lot of things happen. You know, when you become non-grasping with the wisdom and the understanding, and the pure consciousness and the mundane mind collapse. The brain functions differently. Differently. Yeah. So all these things, unless you are a cultivator who has gone through all this, you can never understand, you can never fathom. That's why it's not easy. Mm. So this one is just an added part yeah, for those who are serious and cultivator who have the condition to understand them later. So now I go back to the sharing. Yeah? Ordinary people do not understand the sage. This is very true. This statement is very true. Those who are not certified to the full or to the fruits cannot know the stage of the worthy ones. Sages of lesser wisdom cannot understand the wisdom of Saripul. Bodhisattva, who is the foremost of the Buddha's disciple in Sakyamuni Buddha in wisdom. Shariputta is known as the greatly wise Shariputta, but even he cannot fathom the wisdom of the Bodhisattvas. He is just an arahant, and compared to the Bodhisattva, his wisdom is, <laughs> Shenhua is the word small. <laughs> Bodhisattva, that is Bodhisattva in general, cannot know the state of the successor Bodhisattvas and the success of Bodhisattva does not understand the state of the ultimate venerable ones, the Buddha. So this one is already true. Eh? The Bodhisattva might be as a successor Bodhisattva and he will become a Buddha in the future and succeed Sakyamuni Buddha. But when Sakyamuni Buddha manifests a spiritual transformation, Maitreya did not understand them. And so he gave rise to here the word false thinking is not correct. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> even the word doubt is also not correct. Eh? He he just want to inquire and understand. Yeah? So it's not a doubt. Yes, even the Bodhisattva Maitreya <laughs> can have false thinking. This one I think he used the wrong word. He thought Sakyamuni Buddha is now revealing these appearances. Why? What is the reason? Why? Why the sign? Usually, Bodhisattva does not indulge in false thinking, but he gives rise to three doubts. In fact, these are the questions he asks, huh? the inquiry, not doubt. Huh? Maybe different people use different words. Huh? First, he thought about the Buddha's spiritual transformation, wondering what is the reason for this potential? The Buddha, the world honored one, has now entered Samadhi. Yet these are inconceivable and rare events, which cannot be thought of with the mind or expressed in words. No one knows what they mean, what they mean. What I am going to do, such thing has simple has has simply never happened before. So that was the first inquiry. Yeah? The second inquiry is. He wonder who he should ask. Who should I ask concerning them? Which Bodhisattva who could answer? Then the third inquiry is his third thought was to ask Manjusri Bodhisattva about them. Why should I ask? The Dhamma Prince Manjusri has in the past drawn near and make offering to limitless Buddhas, surely he has seen such rare signs. I shall now ask him. 
since he has surely had the experience already, I will now ask him. This third inquiry cancel out the second inquiry, for he had found someone to ask. Then we go to the Sutta. Thereupon the Bhikkhu, Bhikkhuni, Upasaka, Upasika, as well as the God, Dragon, Spirits, Ghosts, and others, all had this thought. Who should now be asked concerning the Buddha's bright light and sign of spiritual penetration? Outline, Gitu, the Tao of the Assembly. Commentaries. The passage expresses the Tao of the Assembly. Not only the Bodhisattva Maitreya have doubt, but so did everyone in the Dhamma assembly. They wonder what the Buddha was going to do. The God, the dragons, and the ghosts and spirits also did not understand. From the white hair, mark like the Buddha now emits light and manifests spiritual penetration. Who should be asked about them? These are the to doubt of the assembly. They wonder about the six potent. They wonder who to ask concerning them. Now, was Maitreya Bodhisattva really perplexed by all of this? Did he really have doubt? Uh, that Shen Ho also answered, I don't believe so. Why not? Because in the past, he had also drawn near to limitless Buddha. By all rights, he should have had this experience himself, but he pretend that he didn't know, so that he could request the Dhamma for the sake of the assembly. And this is a more probable reason. The Tao of the assembly were real enough, however, and this passage expresses their confusion. Okay, so now we will continue with the second session. Yeah? Meditation reporting. Ah, okay. I brought you. Ah, Sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Alicia normally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe I. Oh, we can't maybe hear you. What happened? Um, Your connection. Oh, maybe I can share. Oh, oh. can you hear me now? Ah, now uh, yeah. I can. Maybe. Yeah. Um, Maybe I can share uh, how I felt like uh, I think one week to 10 days ago. Uh, okay. I, I, yeah. It just, it, I, I, I realized that some this, this is the second time I realized it, it happened. Uh. Mm. So that, that time, I, I, I don't know for, for what reason, I just feel not happy. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the, the feeling of um like not of happy to the point like uh you know um the means because I really felt not not so happy right okay. so whatever I hear people say uh, they can be talking or talking to me is like also mm hang the yeah like you ah, know, yeah, uh, yeah affecting yeah. you yeah <laughs> um, and then or I can see things but I also upset me like, like Okay. Because inside don't feel happy, so whatever I see or hear, also I I <laughs> make it worse uh, Yeah. Uh, but then I I maybe I hear so much dharma already. Now I, <laughs> I just, um, let it be like I, I try to let, let it be. Mm. And, um. So I, I I I did that and then it, it, it passed after I think the following day it was I don't feel that bad anymore. La. Okay. Uh, then I was thinking back how how come I can have all those uh, because there that, that was no um event or anything that could trigger it out, you know. I so know. Uh, uh, so yeah. then um I think uh, when it passed the following day it was a working day. La. Mm -hmm. thinking, um, then I think uh, that, uh, that then when I was working something that, that means during work that, uh, that feeling came came out again okay. uh, that, that means 
when it happened the day before, I, I didn't know why why I feel like that. Yeah. But um, the day after when it was gone, yeah. and then suddenly it came out again. During uh, when I was working, I realized that uh, I, I can feel during, um, during work due to how I feel about work. That means um, uh, like um, there, there is a lot of... Uh, assignments to be done mm. and then uh, maybe people can uh, keep on calling me then i feel mm-hmm. overwhelmed like, like um yeah, yeah. I, I um, yeah i like uh, yeah. feel stressed uh, i don't feel, yeah. don't uh and i i don't want to be in that kind of uh situation yeah, so, yeah, that, yeah. Um, yeah. so that that same kind of unhappiness came out and yeah. i know that even uh that, that it's the same feeling that I had the day before. Like. Earlier on, yes. Uh, so I, I, I think like, that, um, I, you know, that, that, that is how uh, that, that feeling come about like, oh, due to how okay. I react to my... Okay, okay. Yeah. Do you develop I, any I really, contemplative understanding of what happened? Maybe uh, for your case, uh, I need to explain a bit, huh? and uh, you maybe try to recall and see how. Because as you counted it, at the beginning stage especially, you will come to such a phase. Huh? Because like you say, your thought has the idea that maybe you have been listening to too much dumb. And now, the only good thing is when you don't have the happy mind, when you are not peaceful, you actually are aware. But then you also aware that it will condition you to be negative, to be unhappy. Then later on, what you did was you just ignore it. And finally, it like become uh, back to normal again. Then at the work area, it happened again. So what happened is, as we cultivate, we have the understanding and we become more sensitive. That's why you will come across such moment. So this event that happened is actually a condition for you to develop the wisdom and understanding. Sometimes it comes as a way to let you understand what life is. Because this thing has been there all along, even before you had the Dhamma. But when it happened before you had the Dhamma, you also behave in such manner, but maybe in a worse manner. Because without any understanding or any awareness behind, you will actually become miserable most of the time, unhappy most of the time, and reactive most of the time that you describe it. But at least now, you sort of have the ability to notice, I I won't say aware, notice it. Uh, Then you don't know what to do. You are in a way like, you didn't know how to develop the further contemplative wisdom and understanding. Uh, because when it happened, it is fine for you to develop the further wisdom or refinement of understanding to cope with the ordinary mind state of normal people who are not able to have the Dhamma understanding, then they will behave that way without them knowing. And they can become worse than before you know all this. So now you have the condition to understand, but you didn't make use of it to reflect and connect. But luckily you asked. That's why there is condition. So when I explain this, you will know how to move on further. Because in the early days, very early days, I remember, after my mindfulness came, my awareness came, my Dhamma understanding started to surface, then I start to see myself more often. 
I start to understand my own form and my, my thought process, my so-called habitual tendency, reactive mind state or the state more and more, more and more. Then you need to reflect and contemplate and develop the understanding. Yeah, the understanding is the one that will free you, liberate you, and allow you to settle back into a normal state of tranquility, stillness, awareness, and move on. And like you experience what you went through. It's not easy, actually, when you are caught in that, like you got no mood for anything. Like everything is like negative. Uh, song fire uh, uh, and all those things mm. then in the office the thought will start to stir and tell you a story like just now you mentioned maybe too much pressure from work and all those things then all this become the thought process idea then it depends on whether you can accept that reality or not then you may not have the wisdom to actually come to term with all this reality because as you work in the career field you will come to know uh, well, in the early days I remember when I went out to the private sector I tested myself and I went through that I know then when you become like very efficient very good uh, you can handle many things most of the office thing that has difficulty or problem, your boss will come to you. Uh, then he will continue to like give you work to do and all this thing. So normal people cannot take it. That's why they develop stress and they get into trouble. But for me, I am sensitive. I'm aware. I know what is going on. So I develop this ability to handle all this because for me, I'm not worried about whether he uh, get angry with me, not happy with me, then want to like terminate my environment or what. I got no such thought at all. Because when I decide to come out to work, to test myself in the private sector, I was already ready actually. Uh, not only financially ready, I was prepared for all this type of thing. Because I come, I do my duty. There is what they call a career that has been offered through the appointment letter. And my nature want to come out and test myself. And I accepted that job. I will do that duty. But there is a limit to what we can do. Because we have only eight hours a day. Then we cannot be like selling our life to the company and all those things. Because that is not what the employment letter is all about. So when I start to see all these things coming, then I will stop. Then I will tell myself what is going on at this rate. There is no way the meeting start to clash. Then there are a lot of other things yeah, that you need follow up and other things. So there is no way. So I went and told my classmate, who is my boss, also where he owned the firm. He's one of the partners. I said, better you give me people, I train them, then I can still handle. Otherwise, <laughs> no way. Otherwise, you have to tell me which is more urgent by meeting, which one to attend. So finally, he realized, and he said, okay, okay, you go for this, uh, this two difficult one. He said, the rest, you leave it to me, <laughs> he pass it to me. Then he finally got me two more staff, two more engineers. Uh, then also a lot of other things. And when it comes to like, uh, resolving issue and all those things. You just do what is within your capability. So if you are not feeling well, you need a rise or what, you have to tell them. I have to take a rest or whatever. 
but you must not do it to uh, like benefit yourself. You must be really in that state. Uh, then you do it. Uh, but for me, I don't have that uh, like uh, tiredness or one that time. At that time, I was still relatively young, uh, 40 plus. Uh, but normal people would have been stressed up because they, they cannot like uh, handle stress. Uh, workload and all this thing. But if you have the understanding, you will be able to handle them. You have no problem. Just speak the truth and tell them what happened. Uh, uh, it's already uh, overloaded. If they continue to give you, you tell them, you have to let me know which is priority. Uh, because there's a limit to how much your staff or a worker can handle. And at that time, I can tell you, you can say I was like a super engineer. You know, one person can handle so many projects, you know, and they are quite huge and massive. Uh, very, very massive. And my scope, I tell you, they say 10 engineers also can handle. Uh, there was one place where I worked for, the, the boss told me, it's a madhouse. He said, all the engineers come, they cannot stay more than six months. A lot of them cannot take the stress, they just leave. Uh, there were nine before I joined. Then after I joined, I settled everything, I handled everything, and stayed for six to seven years. Uh, well, you have to have the ability to see things clearly, then handle it with understanding, following the Dhamma way, then there is a, what they call joy within. Yeah. Then you just echo and flow, do what you have to do. No need to subject yourself to all those things. You must be willing to say no, because there is a limit to what you can do. Then you can also tell them, I need to go back after office hour because I have my family time to. And you, you, you can tell them what your uh, life is and how you understand the thing. It's not about the pay, you can pay me whatever, but more important is the relationship between work and personal time, personal life. Uh, what has his schedule, his time? They have agreed to the contractual appointment. Then from there, we move. If you can have that understanding, your boss will respect you. I find that all, wherever I go, they respect me and they know. Then when I sound it out, they know they have overdone things. Uh, that's why they resolve it finally. Yeah. Then when I finally want to move on, I say, I want to move on. Then I will write it and give them enough time yeah, to get a replacement or whatever. So all these are part and parcel of cultivation. It involves our career, our life, our time. So for your case, Manyuan, hopefully this will help you. Yeah? It is to develop further understanding and move on. You know, when you are aware, you have to contemplate. You have to reply. How can I deal with such situation in the future? When I experience the awareness of that mind, there is an unhappy mind arising. Like you've got no mood for anything. You are sad. Actually, these are your heavy tendency that you have all along quite often. But in the past, you are not aware. You seldom notice it. Then you just condition by it. You manifest and behave based on how it conditioned you. So now, at least with the Dhamma and the beginning of understanding and awareness, you start to become aware. Then you start to have this, what they call uh, understanding that something is not right already. 
Uh, so initially you try to ignore, then you found out it will come back. Uh, so now you need to reflect and contemplate how you should handle such situation. The unhappy mind, like I say, when it arrives, silence your mind. Be with it. Use the third way. Then finally, when it sees, develop wisdom. Then trace the origination factor. How does it come about? How come you still have that mind state, the reactive mind state that make you both strong or unhappy? There must be a cause and condition behind. So there must be something that has triggered, like you say, the idea that come to you, maybe they give you too much work, stressful and all those things. But whatever it is, you need not be in such situation. But like I say, if you understand your career, your work uh, contract or career uh, appointment contract, clearly all these things need not happen. You can resolve it. Your work is work. Your private time is your private time. When you are not well, you are entitled to take leave to seek to go for sick leave or consult doctors or whatever, then you do your best, be sincere. That's why Noble Eightfold Path is a good guide. If you live according to the Mawi, you will apply Noble Eightfold Path to accept whatever that arises, the reality. Then through your understanding, all my state that arise, you silence your mind and stay with it. That's why in the office, I also meditate. Then I need to rest, I need to silence, I will just silence. Then I will normally lock the door where I was quite privileged, we are very senior, I normally have a room. So I will lock the door. Then sometimes I will just off the light and I will rest. And they know when I rest means I meditate. <laughs> then after that, I will on the light again and I will continue my work. But most of the time, I will do it during lunch break uh, or during after office hour. Uh, then if I have a lot of uh, work to resolve or what, then I will plan my schedule, my time and all those things. So sometimes if the situation demand I have to bring home to do some of the work, I will still do, but not like every day or off and on all those things. Of course it's not. Sometimes it's because the project is urgent and it needs to be resolved. So we will do it. But most of the time I have a lot of free time too. Uh, only until later when you work there for a while, then they know you are good, efficient, then they give you more work, more work, more work. But there will come a point where they will overload you because you are good, you are efficient. So all this is what we will go through as a cultivator. But I managed to resolve them and develop understanding of it. And actually it's a very good experience to go through. And through that, that's why I can advise people when they come and seek my consultation or discuss career problem or work problem with me. In this field, my nature is very good. Yeah. So I can resolve a lot of office things, office politics and all those things. So it's the way you understand it, huh, Maya? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Radio. Uh, uh, <laughs> it is true what you, you just uh, tell me. La. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I realized like over the years, the, maybe the fear of uh, bosses or. Yeah, fear. you must overcome that. Uh, ah, the phobia. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Actually, it's right. reduced a lot. La. Mm. Uh, that means um, I, I used to be afraid of uh, how how they will see me, you know, my profession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now not so much already. Yeah, then, correct. Uh, 
but then that tendency of still wanting to finish thing fast. Uh, no need. Actually, no need. You must do it at your own pace. No need to hurry. Uh, well, people will pile up, you know, and I can't never pass mind. it. You but tell I them know. you want me to resolve it, do it. I need more time. That's it. Or I need more people. You yeah. don't give me any of this. Uh, you expect magic to happen. You know, I don't come and like sacrifice my health yeah. for the salary. No, no such thing. The work contract is not like that. You're not mm-hmm. supposed to uh, take advantage of people. You you cannot do it. It's just like what happened to one of the senior engineers during my time in the public listed company. He worked until not enough rest. He almost got a heart attack. And he landed in the hospital. Then he has a wife. He has four children. And they are actually about to go to college. That's why he was under tremendous pressure. He wants to work very hard, prove it to the boss that he is good. Then he wants the salary, the promotion. So finally, my MD called me out and asked me in a very courteous way, do you okay, you help? I need somebody like you to handle this thing. Then I said, what is it? Then he told me about this senior engineer. Then I said, okay, no problem. I even and you know what happened? After I went in, uh, I turned the project around. He cannot take it. It, it becomes so stressful. But it was a very massive project. And a lot of stress from the client, from the consultant, from the uh, uh, employer bosses, the client, everybody. But I went in. I not only resolved it. I managed to help the company to claim extra a lot of money too. Then after the project was completed, and he also recovered from the hospital. Then the bosses were very kind to him because he didn't give him the stressful project and job anymore. He let him rest for a few months. So I took over the project, which is also towards the deal and finishing. I think over the eight month period, I cleared everything, then cleaned the money. Then he recovered from the hospital. Then he is given. Uh, more easy job and he came and talked to me he said thank you so much Mr. Dio he said uh, you really came to my help as a savior he said otherwise he would have done what happened then he said uh, it's like his whole life uh, single ching chun, uh, you know the Cantonese you know Cantonese uh, yes but, yeah. single ching chun, uh, Mm-hmm. You can understand that, huh? Uh, uh, your, your whole youth uh, given to the company. He said, uh, really, that time he just want to work. Uh, but then he realized he cannot take it really easy. But the heart also cannot take it really easy. Almost heart attack landed in the hospital. So it was very stressful. It was not easy. That's why I saw all this. Uh, and, and that word. It's not supposed to happen. I say, why do you do that? You have a wife, you have four children. All depending on you, I say, you shouldn't do that. He say, yeah, that time. He say, didn't think of all this, I say. <laughs> because number one in the mind is the salary, <laughs> the work. Uh, yeah, every time he deliver, they promote him. <laughs> they give him more bigger project. Uh, and he was one of the most hardworking and uh, I think the blue eye boy, uh, the MD at that time. Uh, but it ended up not so good <laughs> because lack of dhamma, lack of understanding. Then this guy become very close to me. Uh, he, he, he liked me. Uh, uh, he, he thanked me a few times uh, every time. He, he even after I retire, I resign. They still invite me back for annual dinner for many years. And every annual dinner, when I go back, I met him with Tom and he recall all this and he thanked me. He said, he said, this is dear, you are good. He said, after so many years, the company, the MD still remember you. That project, you have out so much, you have us claim so much. <laughs> 
So a lot of things depend on our understanding. If we understand, we can resolve it. We can really create wonder our way. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Uh, so don't yeah. be afraid. Huh? Yeah, don't yeah. have a phobia. Just mm -hmm. work only what is so by bad you. Worst case yeah. scenario is what? They give you a warning or so no. But they have to be reasonable. Mm -hmm. When you are firm and you understand, they cannot do anything. Sometimes emergency. Just tell them, I need to attend to my parents. That's it. I have to go. Yeah, uh. Uh, well, I, I do that already. Ah, you must start doing all this. Yes, don't, yes. don't be fearful. Uh, then stress yourself out because of deadline or this thing. Mm -hmm. And project pile up. Is it due to your problem? No, not your problem. <laughs> because the, the way they give it to you, that's why I am very clear about job and other thing. If it's not in accordance, I will tell them. There's sometimes ethical things also say. I say, you want me to handle? Please, I will handle my way. Yeah? If you agree that I take the job, otherwise you get somebody else. Yeah. So they, they know. They, they will... Actually, before they come to me, they already know I can handle uh, and they know my style. I handle my own way. You ask me to go cook that way, I won't do it. Uh, because that is not the way to do it. Uh, so you want people to do it that way for you, you better hire somebody who is willing to do it. But definitely, it's not me. Because of my principle, I realize I wherever I go, I got no problem. Yeah, but also, I'm good, I deliver, and they know me. That's why I dare to stand up. I dare to tell even the MD or the CEO or the boss. Yeah. Because in the meeting, you have to speak your view and your understanding. Whatever that is appropriate, you need to say it. You have to say it. But of course, not to antagonize people, not to argue and all those things. It is a matter of principles. You have certain uh, appropriate principles. You share your idea and they can accept it. It's very good. There's uh, a lot of things about property development also. He finally ado adopted my advice and he find it very good. I said, in the long term, you will benefit. You don't be like other developers, shortchange people, the defect liability, or try not to do it and shortchange the buyer. The reputation will go down the drain, and people will call you, say bad things behind you, and your developer's name become very punished until nobody trusts you anymore. Then your scheme cannot sell. Your property has not no value. So I say, if you look at all this, it's not worth it. If you do it properly, responsibly, people will talk about your good project and it will sell for you. And your scheme, no need to promote. The buyer will come. That's what he found out. <laughs> then later on, the sales all did very well and that project that property project I did for him. I helped him to plan, redo the shop lot concept. And I told him uh, commercial property has its value. I say you hold on to all this and build up the scheme. You will see the benefit coming in the long run. And that was what he did. And that project, we managed to increase the bottom line by 100 million at least. <laughs> So all those things was possible. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, rather, I, yeah. I, I feel that uh, oh, yeah. I, I, I have increased my confidence because like yeah, last year... Yeah, it's uh, to you, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, um, last year, my immediate boss wanted me to continue doing one project. Uh, and uh -huh. I actually told him I don't want to. Ah, Sadhu, ah, now you can speak up. Very good. That should uh -huh. be the way that under. No need to be shy. What is that to yeah. be shy? Uh -huh. uh, you just approach it from your understanding, your conscience. Mm. Mm. And um, 
I was surprised because he, he accepted or definitely when you oh, have your reason they will accept they will know because you approach them in a way which is very sincere and uh, you are not trying to run away from your responsibility yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and then uh, right here, th this year because uh, last year i uh, had a lot of um, leave that i couldn't take oh so, okay uh, so this year i i was thinking i need to finish already i, I don't yeah, want yeah, to yeah. do like last year la. Right. I, I don't want to accumulate. And ah, no need to carry forward. Uh. So what I do is, yeah. like, um, one month, uh, at least I have to take three days off. That means yeah, one yeah, week, yeah. maybe take one day off. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I just apply like that, you know. Uh. And, and then my, my, my boss emailed back and said, uh, hey, uh, I noticed that you are taking a lot of leave lately. Yeah. Uh, any reason? Uh? Oh, <laughs> no, okay. I'm not no, no. So you tell the boss, lah, huh, frankly, say, well, these are all my accumulated leave. I cannot finish yeah. my leave. Uh. Yeah, I, I told him that. Then uh, because last year I did say something like that to him, and then he said, Hey, never mind lah, you encash your leave, or maybe you you bring forward lah. You you uh, the bank allow you to do so ma. Uh the, the boss always tell you that one, but actually <laughs> end of the day, burn one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you will get third one. Then sometimes they will tell you, you better take it, otherwise burn. Then sometimes people are not informed and it got burned. They become very unhappy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but this is because um, my, my office, they allow us to accumulate. Yeah, that was last year. Oh. But this year, they don't allow it anymore. So I really need to finish it off. Yeah. Just wow. take it. No need to like spread it out or what. Uh, my son used to tell me he just take his leave uh, but let them know in advance the notice uh, that's why he planned his year end holiday last time he every year year end uh, he will take leave and just go for one or two weeks uh, overseas uh, uh, he, he just uh, let them know early in advance uh, then they, they cannot like once they approve already that's it finish then you tell them take it all by the you want to compensate me no. <laughs> they also think twice uh, <laughs> yeah yeah but he, he accepted like uh, afterwards uh, he, he just said that oh you just ensure that your your work is okay before you go uh, and yeah, at least he's reasonable uh, uh, yeah yeah he's reasonable no, I yeah, you tell him no, no problem uh, but don't give me more when you know i'm going on this uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't want you to call me when I want this. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, mm. but he did say like, I must be flexible. Like, if there is a lot of work at that period, then he hoped that I wouldn't take during those periods. Like. So uh, of know. course, that one be, uh, if it's something reasonable, is a request, then you try your best. Uh, he said, yeah. I will avoid those periods. But mm. after mm -hmm. that, you just go. Uh, but give them in advance. Uh, take your yeah. leave whenever. It's normally a block leave. Uh, don't worry about whether they allow or not. Your block leave means they know you are not around. Uh, so they, they have to assign somebody else or get somebody to cover for you or the boss himself will cover for you. Uh, so when I retire from my large job, uh, uh, let's say company, my MD, finally he got to hire six engineers to take over my job. And also he himself also takes some. Uh, that's why I alone can handle a lot of things. Uh, and I don't need my staff. I need only one or two staff. Then I can handle a lot of projects. Uh, at that time, it was very good, very efficient. My mind has a lot of clarity. And i very familiar with my job and my role. Yeah, it's all about construction, property, uh, development. Uh, uh, and also, uh, yeah, I had a lot of exposure as a client and a consultant, and I know the various role very well. That's why I can handle a lot of this type of meetings and projects uh, from inception to end. Yeah. So all these are not easy. Mm. I, I, I did notice that during that uh, time when I was having that unhappy feeling, uh, ah, 
I I say I see whatever I see also nhập ngàn. Yeah, làm nhập ngàn là bổ sung là. Um, so to ngàn to pay everything. Đấy là to ngàn to pay là gì? Your this time your past habitual tendency, uh, your emotion, your mood. Uh. So now you have the understanding uh, that the Dhamma is reflect and contemplate and trace the origination factor. How did it happen? Then stay with it, like I say, when that feeling arrives, mm -hmm. silent, meditate, stay with it. You must go through it. Then you realize these are dependent originating, not intrinsic to your true mind. These are condition arising mind state, emotion which are not you. Mm -hmm. And that profound understanding can awaken you. Then you have a lot of joy. Yeah. Uh, means yeah. the mind depend on understanding where you don't understand it carry all these emotion moods uh, mm. unhappiness misery that's why people can become afflicted yeah people suffer stressful fear phobia a lot of these type of things these are mental problems <laughs> career problems stress uh, so why may not be that way? Mm. Life can be a lot more beautiful and meaningful when you understand. Uh, like the saying goes, uh, uh, angry, emotional, unhappy, also you have to pass through the day. Mm. Uh, being free and happy, peaceful, also the same day can pass by. So what is your choice? Just to be happy. <laughs> Just to be peaceful. Mm. And all this doesn't matter because life is not what people think. There are what they call uh, situation. Maybe people call it problematic uh, problems, stress uh, <laughs> that trigger fear, worry, anxiety, unhappy mind states. Uh, but if you look at life, then you truly have that mind understanding. Then you realize these are only realities that you have to come to term with. Once you come to term with to accept the reality of the moment, then it dissolves. It's no more a problem. So it is a reality. Not only I go through, everybody go through. So what must I do? I must have a calm mind. I must not project my thought to develop the fear, the worry, the anxiety, uh, the insecurity. All this, no use. It doesn't help me. Mm. Then I ask myself, how can I resolve this amicably? How can I move? And these are more tangible wisdom, understanding. When I accept to review, means there are causes and conditions behind. Then I don't get both song anymore, unhappy anymore. Why should I do that? That form of mind is not really what you are. That form of mind is just a vehicle and a tool. If you don't stir it, don't make it emotional to wrong thought and wrong view or have your tendency, then it seems to be. That form of mind is actually subject to the wisdom behind. If the user of it has wisdom and the Dhamma, the form of mind is very beautiful, very cheerful. Uh, no problem. Mm. <laughs> so this understanding you need to reflect, contemplate. Then you need to live it. Then you experience it. Then you understand. Are you actually very simple? No need to worry on this. Uh, just get it resolved. Uh, <laughs> yes, resolved. Attend to it. Uh, resolve problem. Uh, so when you resolve an issue, a situation, the problem is gone. Uh, in the very first place, there was no real problem. <laughs> it's only a problem when you perceive it with fear, negativity, uh, with difficulty, then it becomes a problem. But if it's a reality, you need to resolve, resolve. Of course, sometimes it can be a financial thing, a relationship thing. Quite difficult to entangle your financial. Sometimes people cannot resolve. But you need to somehow survive and 
planet uh, so I need to look for some form of finance or what you have to look for it then if you can't beyond then worst case scenario is declare bankruptcy or anyone as long as you don't commit criminal breach of trust cbt or or any of this uh, violate the civil law then there's nothing <laughs> it, it, it's just a common uh, what they call uh, a debt problem you want to pay but right? you don't have the resources to pay so it's not a criminal thing and then that's why they say maximum bankruptcy <laughs> sue you bankruptcy which means they don't get back anything but you can avoid you should avoid because we have the means to actually earn a living we can plan our life then we have good karma just like take care of karma karma take care of our life and things will effort and flow and become beautiful it will flower <laughs> Okay, but yeah, uh, today is very good. Eh? We share a lot of good things. Mm. You're right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, now I, even though I feel bad inside, I, I just don't like say back things, uh, you know, things that will uh, make the other party. Uh, yeah, no more such evil thought, I, I, thought I, uh, negative thought. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the the dangers, uh, uh, negative wrong thought or no more really. uh, mm. you can accept the reality and move on people are just the way they are <laughs> when you I feel, on, feel bad uh, like, you know if uh, that person says something that I, I I take it badly but I, I just don't like uh, yeah you don't hold it anymore like uh, last time uh, yeah you can just let it pass because it's sankara, sankara anichang, sankara dukkang, no reality. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. the, the present moment is the only reality. How mm -hmm. real can it be? Split second is dead and gone. Yeah. Uh, you don't have a mind or a mundane thought to hold it. Nothing mm -hmm. exists. <laughs> That's why yeah. everything is not what we think. <laughs> yeah um, but, but I do uh, notice something like if um, uh, if let's say I have said something bad uh, then um, it, it would drag on but if I, I hold myself then yeah. the next instant that person like forgot what he said also you know like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. he was nothing yeah because you are not reactive yeah, um, yeah but no I mean to him uh, he he didn't do anything that bad because correct Ah. You didn't react, that's why you just silent. That is like nothing, just everything just normal again. That's oh. why sometimes you don't have to do anything. Yeah. You just yeah. smile. Ah. Uh. The other person was also okay already. After yeah, about. definitely. Ah. Because you are not reactive. Yeah. <laughs> you don't take it personally, but you take it personally and react and uh -huh. become like both of they can feel it that they also have a temper they also emotional yeah. they are also human being huh? uh, yeah. huh. like uh already I, I share this one uh, which i i i was also surprised but i i still need to work on it because mm. in reality uh, i find him quite rude la, and um <laughs> six, like I, that is my thinking la. yeah like once that uh, he he came and he wanted to borrow my car because my, my car is manual. Oh, and, uh, okay. Yeah, and he, uh. he he is learning how to drive. Uh, so driving, they started with manual, no, not automatic. Right? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So I say, okay, uh, no problem. You can come and borrow the car. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when he arrived, uh, he, to me, uh, I perceive him. Uh, he uh. said, where's the key? Wow, I find him very rude, but I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> the key. After yeah, I give him the key, hey, right here, he said, hey, inside got petrol or not enough? Ah? <laughs> then, I say, then I say, oh, petrol you have to pump because it's nearly empty already. Uh -huh. Oh, then he said, huh? This is your car, you know, you expect me to pump petrol? Ah? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I mean, inside, lah. I 
didn't purposely uh, uh, make the car empty. Yeah, yeah. That when you ask, it was already almost empty. So yeah. now if you want to use it, you need to yeah. pump. Lah. But I didn't say things like that. But inside, I was like, wow, this fella, this fella. I want to box him already. But yeah. didn't <laughs> no wonder you use a word, music psych. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I st- but I, I see like how you start to yeah. understand uh, there are people with very style of very strange and funny uh, character. Yeah, very strange. Yeah, for us, we don't have such selfish uh, and deluded thought and attitude. If we want to ask a friend to lend us the car, we already have gratitude. We won't be like, hey. Where is the key? Oh, uh, uh, go back to uh, uh, Unless he's joking. Uh, uh. Not, not joking. I, I, I don't know. That's why I need to moni- uh, see uh, further. Uh, maybe he, that is the way he he is. Uh. That means uh, to uh, him is nothing. But he, he carries himself he related, like that. I don't know. Related uh, to you. Uh, related. Uh, I'm not related. I sent him to go. <laughs> <laughs> I think related. That's why he take. For granted, you know, you are the soft type, uh, easy to bully on. Uh, uh, yes, but, uh, so young, very young, uh, learning how to drive only, right? Uh, ah, hello? So young. Uh, yeah. We yeah, call yeah, you teacher or what? Uh, yeah, radio. Right. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know, radio, right. you don't need to know. <laughs> yeah, they need to know. Uh, 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 then after that, uh, uh, I... I Inside, not happy, la, but I, I didn't. La. I, I just say, yeah. la, you want to use the car? You bum. La. I say yeah. like that. La. Uh. Uh. Then uh, I was very surprised, you know. Then uh. Uh, like he, he suddenly changed, you know. He said, oh, okay, la, I pump. Uh, which, which petrol station you, you, you usually use? Uh? Uh, he asked me, uh, oh, no, that means that, that kind of rudeness that I perceive. He, he no money or not? Is he working already? I'm not working. <laughs> I'm not working. You no know, wonder he tell you I go back to the other. He come with the father, ma. He come with the father. Oh, he come with the father. Then the father got money. Don't worry. Yeah. Ah, but after yeah. that, I said, okay lah. I got voucher lah. Voucher. Then you use that voucher to pump lah ten ringgit. Ah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But the fact is that after I say, of course, you pump. Uh, uh, I didn't scold him. I say, yeah lah. You use what you pump lah. <laughs> then he changed well. I thought he's gonna argue with me some more, you know. He said, No, 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 you it's your car, you go and pay it and, and I don't care. The other one, he said, Oh, uh, okay la, uh, which which <laughs> petrol station you yeah, usually I think pay. he he realized that uh, that he's borrowing your car. So oh, it's okay, right? Then he put in some petrol and he's using it. Yeah. Oh, but actually it's a small day to day thing that you can actually experience and then through this understanding when you reflect when you condemn it it becomes an understanding that is what dhamma is we are in life we confront people of different character uh, and personality uh, some are very weak ones some are very selfish but some are very respectful full of gratitude uh, and they really have this appreciative mind. Uh, uh, but so far, so good. <laughs> uh, my niece and nephew, they are all very good so far. They never had such uh, character problem. <laughs> uh, but they tend to respect us. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, they have respect for us. Uh, maybe they know over the years we have been helping yeah, most of them. Mm. Mm. And they also know that we have different understanding. Mm. That's why they look up upon us as role model. Mm. <laughs> and my niece and nephew, they all like to come to my place. <laughs> mm. Mm. Thank you, Radio. Yeah, yeah, so do. Yeah. Uh, so thank you so much uh, yeah, for your good sharing. Yeah. Anything else? Mm. No, la. just that part uh, yeah. to make more understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make which is good. Uh, yeah. And today one is day to day life, uh, which is application of Dhamma, which is very good. Mm. Okay, we have to maybe 
do the sharing of merit when we end early. Yeah? So today okay. at least we can end before 10.30. Yeah? So okay. Sadhu, once again, yeah? we rejoice. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu.